In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And good morning, everybody. You're all very welcome to our family mass this morning. And I suppose it's best mention the little uh, regulations concerning the virus that are in place. Firstly, you will have noticed there's some appropriate gel available as you came into church, and we would be grateful if you would avail of it on the way out as well. In addition, the sign of peace will be suspended until further notice. And you're asked not to attend Mass if in any way you have been exposed to the virus in any way or if you have visited any place that might have any remote link to it. As we're asked to put our own health and the health of one another first as best we can. And for those who may not be, it may not be appropriate to come to Mass, there is the Mass can be picked up on the parish website or indeed on television uh, many Sunday mornings also. It's an evolving situation, and we're asked to do our best to go along with what's been asked of us at this time. In particular, uh, jury mass, you're asked to receive Holy Communion on the hand for the duration of this time. Now, our mass this morning is celebrated for Greta Cullen as the fifth anniversary and for Bertie Cullen also as an anniversary. We remember too all those who died recently, Alice Fowler, Kevin Hoban, Helen Forsyth, Dennis McGran, McGrain, Colm Kane, and all our deceased relatives and friends. Praying that the Lord will give to all of them the fullness of peace and eternal life. Now back to our Mass for this morning. The Gospel today is the account of the Transfiguration, that Gospel where Jesus goes up a high mountain with Peter, James and John, and the aspect of his face is changed, transfigured. And in that moment, God the Father speaks to him and he says, this you are my beloved son, and he asks us to listen to him. So now, to prepare ourselves to celebrate our Mass well, let us pause for a moment as we acknowledge our sinfulness and ask the Lord for his mercy and forgiveness in each of our lives. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. So now we be seated as we listen to our reading from God's Word. And our first reading on your missalette this morning, it comes from the book of Genesis, and it's the call of Abraham, Abraham to be a leader of God's people. And Abraham is understood to be our father in faith. Do we have no... Yes, Pat's on the way. Thank you, Pat. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. Abraham, Abraham, he called. Here I am, he replied. Take your son, God said, your only child, Isaac, whom you love, and go into the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him as a burnt offering 
on a mountain I will point out to you. Sorry. Um, sorry, wrong reading. Sorry. Uh, same with the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abraham, Leave your country, your family, and your father's house, for the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name so famous that it will be used as a blessing. I will bless those who curse you. I will curse those who slight you. All the tribes of the earth shall bless themselves by you. So Abram went as the Lord told him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. With me, bear the hardships for the sake of the good news, relying on the power of God who has saved us and called us to be holy, not because of anything we ourselves have done, but for his own purpose and by his own grace. This grace has already been granted to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has only been revealed by the appearing of our Saviour Christ Jesus. He abolished death, and he has proclaimed life and immortality through the good news. The word of the Lord. Please stand to proclaim the gospel. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone. There in their presence he was transfigured. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared to them and they were talking with him. Then Peter spoke to Jesus. Lord, he said, it is wonderful for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when suddenly a bright cloud covered them with shadow. And from the cloud there came a voice which said, This is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my favour. Listen to him. When they heard this, the disciples fell on their faces, overcome with fear. But Jesus came up and touched them. Stand up, he said. Do not be afraid. And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one but only Jesus. As they came down from the mountain, Jesus gave them this order. Tell no one about the vision until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Sometimes I find preparing to come to celebrate the family mass, that you need to be armed on the double. What do I mean by that? Well, very simply, you need to have a little homily in case many children turn up, and you need to have something a little bit more adult for the adults. And I want to say this, I see very few young people this morning, whether that's to do with the virus or what, I'm not sure. But I do want to acknowledge the presence of the boys and girls who are with us this morning and to say thank you for making the effort, and also to say thank you to your parents for your encouragement and support. It makes a difference. But the greater number this morning uh, are of a different generation than the boys and girls, and so I will stay with the little bit of preparation I had done for the, if you like, more adult masses over the weekend. And I might sort of put it like this, some gospel passages are more easily understood than others. Isn't that true? Some gospels you can understand almost immediately uh, when you hear them. It could be a gospel like the birth of Jesus at Christmas, or it could be Jesus going along, uh, touching the lives of people who are sick or broken, and he heals them. We can easily identify with them, and we can understand what they're about because they connect into our ordinary human experience. But then there are other gospel passages that are more difficult to understand. If you like, there might be a more, um, more spiritual or more religious uh, type of content. And I think the gospel that we have this morning is one of those. The gospel of the transfiguration is not easily understand, understood. It's more to do with the heavenly realm, if you like, and of the spiritual variety. What is this gospel about this morning? Well, I think very simply, and to summarize it very briefly, the gospel this morning gives us a brief glimpse of Jesus' future glory, how things will be after the resurrection. And not alone does the gospel this morning give us a glimpse of Jesus' future glory, it also gives us a glimpse of our own future glory as well when the work of life is complete and when, please God, one day we shall share the glory of God in heaven. So today is about the transfiguration of Jesus, but it's also about the transfiguration of you and I. And it's not a shortcut and it's not an easy way out. Even though there is this moment of Jesus' transfiguration, it doesn't take away the fact that he will have to endure his passion he will have to endure his death on the cross. And likewise, the parallel for us is obvious too. As we go through life, we'll have to endure the difficult things that come our way, 
the cross in its many guises. They come before our future glory, if you like. Uh, this gospel this morning, I believe, it gives us hope and it helps us to endure the difficulties of life, the various forms of cross that each one of us in our own way uh, has to contend with and deal with as we go along. And this gospel this morning reminds us that the crosses of life, the suffering of life, is not an end in itself. Because that if you like, it points to the future, that future when we will share the glory of God in heaven. And there is another important aspect to that gospel this morning. We see the voice coming through the clouds, as it were, the voice of God the Father, saying, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Those words were addressed not just to the disciples, Peter, James and John, all those years ago, but they're addressed to us this morning as well. We too are asked to recognize Jesus as the beloved son of God and to listen to him. Now, some people are wonderful at listening, but by and large, I think our culture at this time is a fairly noisy one, not good at listening, and certainly not good at listening to Jesus uh, and his message. And so the gospel this morning is an invitation to each one of us to take time and space to be still, to reflect, and to know that God is God. And I will conclude this morning with a short reflection, taking time to be still, to reflect. And I would hope also taking time to, still, to be still and to reflect might form a significant part of our Lenten journey this year. Because so often during Lent, we become preoccupied by what we're giving up, what we're taking up, and so on. But the, God, the call of the gospel, too, is a call to be people of prayer, people of stillness. The reflection goes as follows. The gospels show clearly that Peter was a man of action. He always needed to be doing something. And there's many Peters in our world today, too. People who have to be doing regardless. And so on Mount Tabor, the scene or the setting for the transfiguration, instead of contemplating in silence and in wonder the glory of God, he wanted to build three tents. There is a time for stillness, for contemplation, for wonder, for adoration in the presence of God. A time to heed the words of the psalmist, be still and know that I am God. Sometimes we are too busy. We would, it would be better at times if we were silent. Time to be listening, time to be wondering, time to be adoring in the presence of God. And so may that time of stillness, that time of reflection, form a significant part of our journey in life. And may we too know that Jesus is the beloved Son of God. And if we take time, we too will listen to him and find valuable words to encourage us and to support us on our life's journey. And even that moment of stillness might help a little too. Now, we have our first collection, as usual, the collection for the support of the priests of the parish, the priests of the diocese, uh, and those who are retired, and many who are sick and unwell. And on behalf of all of us, I thank you for your ongoing support. And while that's happening, I will mention our notices for this morning. Obviously, the sensible thing to do if you want to get the full picture is to take the Annunciation newsletter with you and there you will see many of the things happening during these days and week. Uh, clearly, the coronavirus is a significant part of our notices this morning, but I've already touched on that at the beginning of Mass. Uh, secondly, the, our diocese is having a pilgrimage to Knock on Saturday the 25th of April, and if you're interested in going or would like to be part of it, please contact Jason in the parish office during the week. 
The Churchtown uh, Scripture Study Group continues on the Thursday nights uh, of Lent uh, in the parish centre there in the church grounds in Churchtown uh, from half past seven each Thursday evening to about half past nine with a tea break or coffee break in the middle of it. And all are welcome. Uh, Walk With Me, uh, Lent companion booklet. Uh, there are still some available at the bookshop, uh, price one euro thirty, and you might find them helpful um, during the days of Lent in your reflection. Uh, the Holy Land trip for October, we're still hoping that it'll be possible to travel. Already well over 20 people have signed on from the different parishes, our, our own, Churchtown and Ballyrone, and a few people from further afield. So if you are interested in traveling with us, on this very special journey to the land of the Lord, uh, please contact the parish office uh, or myself. The Bethany Bereavement Support Group will be available in the parish centre on Tuesday morning of this week at a quarter to 11. And that's all the notices for this morning. So now I invite you to stand for our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now we come to our prayer of the faithful. And on this the second Sunday of Lent, we ask the Lord to hear the prayer of each one of us, the prayer of all of us, as we ask the Lord to help us to be still, to reflect, and to renew our lives in preparation for Easter. The response to each of the prayers is, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In today's gospel, we read how Jesus was transfigured and how the apostles experienced a vision of the divine presence which awaits the faithful following the trials of this world. We pray today for the grace to remain steadfast in our faith so that we are worthy of being in that transfigured presence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who recently lost loved ones and ask the Lord to comfort them with the assurance that those who have departed this life are now in the company of the Christ who showed the infinite joy of his glorious presence to the apostles in his transfiguration. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we celebrate International Women's Day, we ask the Lord to bless all women so that their important role in our world society be recognized and rewarded. We pray particularly for mothers who daily strive to nurture their children and bring peace to their families, their homes, and their communities. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all women who live in the despair of poverty, violence, trafficking, slavery, and abuse. We pray that the light of God's love bring them hope in their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus flu, particularly the people of Italy and here in Ireland, and ask the Lord that we, our families and our community, be spared from this very dangerous epidemic. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We take a moment now in silence so that each one of us can bring our own personal prayers into God's presence for the great variety of our needs. Lord, hear us. And we ask the Lord to help each one of us during these weeks of Lent to take time and space to be still, to reflect, and to acknowledge that God is God. Lord, hear us. Lord, open our eyes to your glory and to the beauty of our faith. And just as the eyes of the disciples were open in Mount Tabor, so too may we be open to your presence in our lives. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. 
So now we be seated, please, and we have our share collection as usual, and I thank you for your support. Let us now pray, my sisters and brothers, that this sacrifice of ours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he talked to Chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. In song, let us now proclaim the mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Dermot our Bishop, and all the clergy, the religious, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And in particular, we remember all those we prayed for by name at the beginning of this Mass, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. So now I invite you all to stand, please, as we pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the Lord's Prayer. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For thine is the You know the sign of peace is suspended at this time, but there's nothing to stop anybody making a nod or smiling at the people beside you or some appropriate gesture. But first, we pray for God's peace for all of us. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. And with your spirit. So we just wish each other the peace of God in the heart and life of each of us. Peace, peace with, be with all you. you. Peace be with you. Peace with your lips. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world, have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring us to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for us protection in mind and body and a healing remedy.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy to enter into my roof, but only Lord, say the word, word and, and my soul shall, shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep all of us safe for eternal life. Thank you. 
Thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. So thank you all for being with us this morning. I appreciate the changes necessary uh, because of the threat of the virus uh, are a bit inconvenient for everybody, and probably not particularly welcome by many people, at the same time as we do our best uh, to be there for one another and to take what precautions uh, we can. I thank everybody who took part in our Mass this morning in any way, all those who ministered in the various ministries throughout Mass. Sinead did all the serving on her own, didn't you? She did a very good job, didn't she? And then Pat came to her rescue with the readings and the prayers. Thank you so much, Pat. And also Margaret at the organ and Fiona in the singing. Thank you both very much for adding to our liturgy this morning. I wish you every God's blessing, all of you now, for the remainder of Sunday and indeed for the week that lies ahead. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is now ended, so we go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.
ยิงเทคโนยิงเทคโนอะไรเงี้ยอำนาจจะสูงอืมอืมอืมอืมอืม